Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with Wolves reporter Tim Spears. Tim, thank God it's Friday. Friday today. And we come back to the office. Yes, come back to the office. Um, feeling refreshed. Well, sort of refreshed. You're, um, it's starting to, starting to fade a little bit. That's soon now. He's still making that gag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the peeps, the peeps are enjoying it. They're enjoying the continuation. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. So we've come back to the studio. Nothing to do with uh, <laughs> the, the battery running out at all on the camera. No. Nothing to recharge. No. And all about just a different situation for a different day. Why would you say that? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know, I just want to get them in the inside joke, so to speak. Yeah, you've gone on holiday, haven't you? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can be interesting to eat. <laughs> I'm sad to read it. Out there with Barry. Is that where you're going, is it? Yeah, apparently, yeah. Barry's there at the moment. So we meet up with him and have a bit of a dinner. Right, yeah. just you two. Just me and him to kind of let me for two. Why are you doing that? Bill Should be back. fun. I know, I know, I know, but you know, it's fine. I still love you. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> right, come on, let's talk some football. Let's talk about some management. Management for the seeds, and let's talk about Nuno, Nuno, Nuno. I mean, let's be honest, no one really knew too much about him before he came here in pre season. Impressed us, but come on. I mean, this guy is he's a bit special. Yeah, no, you're right. Nobody, yeah, he had a reputation of sorts, but nobody... I hadn't really heard of him too much. Right, okay. Nobody knew... Had you heard about him too much? Yeah, loads. Oh, come nobody on, knew uh, quite how he would go. He's got he's got a decent CV, and I'll tell you what, I think he's done the, he's done the job of his career mm -hmm. in getting Wolves to the top flight, not just in getting them there, but in such style. Yeah. And everything he's done, pretty much, has turned to gold <laughs> and black. Oh, like it, hey. like it, we. So it's taken five um, days of videos, but you finally caught the good line. <laughs> he's uh, the loving that that fans have for him. I've never seen anything like it before. Zenga, it's <laughs> so, oh Zenga. No Zenga went Re down. <laughs> we talk about management, ex-management. Lambert and Zenga both got relegated. Oh, yeah. Bad times for them. What a shame. So, anyway, Nuno. I felt sorry for Zenga. Did you? He said, "I said I've died." That was a quote. Uh, <laughs> to his family. Typically, uh, typically taking the emotion out of it there, Senga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> typically <laughs> understated. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, Senga. God, that was a long time ago. Uh, so yeah, well, yeah, Nuno. The loving is is unbelievable. Mm. I've never known it before. No. I mean, McCarthy was was loved, but not universally. But honestly, you, you loved him. This guy. <laughs> I did love Mick. I know you did. This guy, Nuno, he could say anything and the fans would just lap it off. Yeah. Um, like a cat to milk. <laughs> quite, quite. <laughs> and he's come up with some interesting milk this season. Uh, <laughs> Pasteurised. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some UHT in there. It's uh, not been great. But the fans. I don't even know what that means. They absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, he could say anything. Uh, but no, but he's. Um, a phenomenal coach, a phenomenal manager, and the things he's, as you say, special. Um, got almost everything right, and you mm -hmm. can see him being a success in the Premier League. Um, the way he's man managed players, I think, is particularly impressive, none more so than, than someone like Conor Cody, but you feel when you're speaking to the players that they all kind of believe in him and in his, his ethos, which is very important that they buy into it. Yeah, and they did that in pre-season, that's where it all started, that's where the, the foundations were laid for this phenomenal success was in pre-season and the players bought into it and it's it's hard not to like him when, it, when he's when he's talking to you in that way and it's hard not to believe that what he's saying is right and um, he's got this kind of mystical air about him really and, mm -hmm. and the players all buy into it, yeah absolutely, yes he's a disciplinarian, yes he can hand out a rollicking and yes he demands perfection but Wolves have aimed for perfect and, and not been too far off this mm -hmm. season so Connor Cody as you say Cavalera will be another one for me. He's, he's, he's completely got him playing ex exactly how he wanted him to this season. The formation's been perfect. Mm. The tactics, there's hardly any weaknesses there. And the passion he's shown on the touchline as well. The fans just absolutely love that. Um, well, I'm going to say about the passion, and the passion yeah. which, which the fans do love. The, the referees, not so much. No, Neil Warnock, um, Neil Warnock didn't really Neil like Neil Warnock, it. not so much, although apparently he's kissed and made up now and kind of forgot up, so it doesn't matter. Um, the Premier League now with referees and the way that they everything is analysed in, in yeah. 20 different camera angles will he you, need you to change you can't wait for the oh I know I'll tell you what I'll take a good angle <laughs> um, will will um, will Nuno have to tone down so to speak I don't think he can you think he's only got one one I'm not person? sure I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Nicely put. <laughs> I'm not sure he can tone it down. Um, it might get him in a bit of trouble with the authorities. He might have a, a touchline ban or two. Yeah, but like um, in the championship, but he like, well, well, okay, well, he I think a lot. 
A touchline ban, I think, is pretty serious now. It didn't really impact them too much last season. I yeah, mean, but you only got you only got a few signs here and there, didn't you? I don't know. That 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 passion's a, it's a weakness, uh, very occasionally, but mostly it's a strength. Mm. And yeah, he'll rub a few managers up the wrong way. But I think he'll probably he'll probably be slightly better behaved. He knows a lot of these guys. He knows Mourinho. He knows Guardiola. Yeah. Uh, he didn't care much for Neil Warnock or a few or a few of the others. What did he um, say? What? What did he say about them? Warnock. What did he say? Yeah. He just didn't care, did he? Dude, just zero interest. Yeah, <laughs> zero interest. So, yeah, I, don't, I don't think it matters too much. It might become a bit of a sideshow, and I think referees and their decisions will will be a bit of a talking point and a bit of a theme of next season. You know, Wolves Wolves have rallied against referees all season long, despite them getting the majority of decisions going their way. Won't be the case in the Premier League next season because they're, they're they're the upstarts coming in and exactly. Do you think they? Do you think they they think that as well. Do you think Nuno would think, oh, we've got the, the majority of decisions this year? Or do you think if you asked him, yeah. like, no, oh, you do? No, I think I think they argue and they make that point because they want they want all of them. Okay. And they're constantly in the referees and fourth officials' ear because mm-hmm. they think it probably helps. Oh, I, poor fourth officials as I well. Know, yeah, I, don't think it make, I don't think it makes much of a difference whatsoever. Mm. The team towards at the top of the table tend to get more decisions. Okay. Uh, and we'll probably won't be at the top of the table next season. So, um, so yeah, but no, overall, he's, he's done an absolutely phenomenal mm. job and I don't think fans would, would change anything about him. Backroom staff as well. Yeah, a key part of it, and yeah. you know the the lengths they go to in terms of de- attention to detail, mm-hmm. uh, scouting the opposition, but more mo- professional into it. But mostly preparing the individual players. The the whole week is centred around the game and the players uh, on our, on and off the field. You know dietary requirements as well. Keep themselves mm-hmm. fit. They don't do as much gym work as they have done in the past. You know that's that's been a key part of it as well. So yeah, the attention to detail is, is phenomenal, and it makes the players feel like they're mm-hmm. fully prepared and mm-hmm. you see that out the pitch because they don't look like anything's in doubt when they take to that field. So from a tactics point of view of course this try and tested formation which said he's not going to change and he's going to go into the Premier League however we have seen parts this season where he's had to change it um, change formation it's not gone particularly well I think that's an understatement he's, he's going to have to have a plan B and a plan C next year. Almost every time the formation has been changed it's gone wrong. Mm. Or Wolves have looked weaker for it anyway. You know, we saw a couple of times when they had red cards, or certainly when he's tried to make tactical changes at half time. Couple of couple of bizarre decisions, really. It's, pr- it's probably his, it's probably his weak, the weakest aspect of his management. Ju- just judging on last season, is so that because of squad depth and he hasn't he hasn't got the players to maybe to, to maybe change formation, so to speak? Will will new additions help that? Possibly, but he hasn't looked to play any other way this year. So, but I think he will need a plan B next year. Mm. Certainly for Premier League away games against some of the big boys, I think you know, we'll see we'll set up more and more defensively, playing on the counter attack, which could suit them with the pace they've got up front. Mm. But yeah, that's something that he'll need to he'll need to look at next season. Yeah, definitely. So we we'll look at you know Jeff Shee, uh, of course, been very important, being here as well, and with Ke- Kenny, you know Kevin Thelwell and and Laurie Darrymple. What kind of goals will Foson be setting Nuno and his men next season? Good, Realistically, good question. I think they're aiming for mid table. Okay. And I think they'd like a little tilt at going for uh, Europe. Honestly, first you know, th- it's difficult, isn't it? It is difficult because it's a completely different league. First and foremost, they should be looking to stay up. Yeah. But they want more than that. And with the money they've got and with George Mendes and with the squad they've already got, they've got mm. a very good team already. Mm. They put If they put their Championship 11 out onto the field next season, they'll do pretty well. Mm. But obviously, they need more depth because injuries, injuries as, we, as we said earlier in the week, a couple mm. of days ago, injuries could have cost them. Yes. If if they'd had a few and they potentially won't be as lucky or fortunate with injuries next season, although they do place a big emphasis on injury prevention. So it's yeah, they're they're looking for mid table. I think if you look at the Premier League last season, it wasn't, wasn't the best Premier League. It was going. a dire Premier League. So if it's going to be a similar story next season, you look at the teams coming up with them. Cardiff and another to be confirmed. You know, you certainly mm. fancy them to finish above Cardiff, Villa, and or Fulham. Yeah, I think next season. So and there are a lot of bang average teams in the bottom half of the Premier League. Like, <laughs> uh, Albion have been relegated, so I can't say that. Oh. Who else is West Ham are bang average? Yeah, Bournemouth. I don't really like Bournemouth. No, dreadful. Um, can't, it's less annoying as many clubs as it can be. Yeah, oh, Newcastle. They love me in Newcastle. Oh, right? they love <laughs> me in Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Wow. So, um, no, it's in terrible. Huddersfield. Yeah. Oh, Huddersfield, Brighton. Yeah. 
awful. <laughs> Dreadful. Let's not go down this route again. If, if Wolves carry on the momentum they've got from this season, then, then they could get on a bit of a roll. Yeah. And I think uh, they turned Molyneux into a bit of a fortress this season. Their away form's been very good as well. I, I can see them upsetting a few of the big teams. Mm-hmm. And as far as quality, they're certainly more than a match for most of those bottom half Premier League teams. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Uh, we'll Fortress see how Molyneux. we'll see how they react to adversity because they did that very well this year. But there may be there'll be times this season when they will lose two on a bounce. Which they haven't done under Nuno yet. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how they react to that. We'll see if they've got the squad depth. We'll see if they can be as defensively sound as they were this season because that was a crucial part behind their success. But I think with the money they're going to be spending and they're going to make it more of a quality rather than quantity squad, I think mm-hmm. we'll see a core of low 20s really that, that to, to call upon next season. It won't be a massive squad and it'll be rich in quality. They'll sign a lot of players this summer, they'll spend a lot of money and they'll be very well prepared for the Premier League. And Nuno will be there, start of the season? Yeah. End of the season? End of next season? Uh, yeah, yeah. 2020? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and that completes our season review. Hope you've enjoyed it throughout the week. Uh, me and Tim, we'll see you... Uh, it's t- time to change shirts. Isn't it's, it, really? t- it's time to have a wash, time to have a wash, to be fair. Thanks for, thanks for hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you in Switzerland.